Hello and welcome to Reshaping the Restaurant Supply Chain in the Digital Age. This is a case study focused webcast where we're going to offer attendees an inside look at how one of the leading restaurant groups in the world, Bloom and Brands Inc., coordinates its complex supply chain to deliver an exceptional restaurant experience at the lowest cost to serve. My name is Michael Levins and I'm Group Editorial Director for Peerless Media Supply Chain Group which of course includes logistics management, modern materials handling, and supply chain management review magazines. And I'll be your moderator for this session that's being brought to you by One Network. Now with rising customer expectations and increasingly intense competition, restaurants are challenged to satisfy and retain customers, ensure optimal freshness, freshness and quality, all while controlling costs and waste. Waste. Well, I'm sure that just about all of us are familiar with either Bonefish Grill, Carabas Italian Grill, Fleming's Prime Steakhouse and Wine Bar, and Outback Steakhouse. These are the foundations of Bloom and Brand's business. And as a key part of this operation, the company runs a highly complex and distributed supply chain with over 1,500 restaurants and over 3,500 menu items. Quite an, uh, quite an overwhelming number. Well, today we're going to get an exceptional inside look at how Bloom and Brands has been able to gain visibility across its supply chain, improve efficiency, reduce waste, which is so important in this business, increase communication and collaboration with supply chain partners, something we all need to do, automate store ordering and replenishment, and leverage blockchain to secure its supply chain operations. Now, these are all moves that have helped BBI to truly differentiate itself in one of the most competitive markets that exists. And I'm happy to say that today, we're going to learn how they did it and learn why, you know, how, what they learned in the process and how they plan to continue to differentiate and keep their operations out in front for the future. Now, to take us on this journey today, we're joined by Juan Guerrero, and Juan is Senior Vice President and Chief Global Supply Officer for Bloom and Brands. Juan is responsible for overseeing Bloom and Brands' global supply chain functions, including sourcing strategies for new markets, leveraging networks in existing markets, and optimizing productivity. Welcome, Juan. We're looking forward to it. Juan will be joined by Bernard Gore. And now, Bernard is Vice President, Sales and Marketing for Retail, Food Service, Consumer Goods, Pharma, and Healthcare Industries at One Network Enterprises. In that capacity, Bernard is responsible for all global business planning and marketing and sales activities for these industries I just mentioned. He's also acting as executive sponsor for some of the existing One Network customers. So welcome, Bernard. Just a quick question, or I'm sorry, just a quick reminder before we get started. There will be a question and answer session following the presentation. We try to allow about, about 10 minutes for that. So please submit your questions to today's presenters as they roll along. We're going to get to as many questions uh, during that Q&A session. But if we don't get to your question, those, those questions are going to be wrapped up and moved over to our two speakers. Nate, those guys can get back to you uh, via email. So without any further ado, I'll just move that over to you, Juan. Why don't you take it away? Thank you, Michael. Um, and today I will be sharing with you how Blooming Brands is transforming its restaurant supply chain with a one network blockchain-enabled cloud network solution. Uh, to start, here's some background on Blooming Brands. Uh, Blooming is a company of founder-inspired restaurants and is one of the world's largest casual dining companies. We are headquartered in Tampa, Florida, and our portfolio of unique restaurant brands includes Outback Steakhouse, Carabas Italian Grill, Bonefish Grill, and my favorite, Fleming's Prime Steakhouse and Wine Bar. We operate nearly 1,500 restaurants throughout the U.S., including Puerto Rico and Guam, and in 19 other countries. We have over 97,000 team members and are a publicly traded company under the ticker symbol BLMN. You can find out more information about Blooming at investor.bloomingbrands.com. Blooming Brand supply chain has been transformed as part of Blooming Brands' overall transformation because of the challenging competitive restaurant landscape. There are extremely low barriers to entry in this industry. No longer does it require the backing of a large chain or franchisor to open a restaurant. How to operate a restaurant is well documented, accessible, and easy to replicate. And the gap between people eating at home versus in restaurant is massively widening. People see food at home as more convenient, 
healthier or higher quality and less expensive than restaurants. That has given life to a new set of competitors such as Blue Apron <clears throat> and prepared food at grocers like Publix. <clears throat> when people want to want prepared meals, they still prefer eating at home and have food delivered to them. Hence, we have a huge surge in the delivery market with com competitors like Uber Eats, DoorDash, and Grubhub, among others. <clears throat> with this competitive landscape, you see the increased desire for various digital capabilities. Uh, the modern guest has a myriad of concerns around diet and nutrition, food allergies, and the environmental impact of their dining choices. They want easy access to nutrition information. In addition, governments are beginning to mandate laws around availability of nutrition information, whether it be printed on menu or having it available in stores, ranging anywhere from calories to sodium to other allergens. Of course, 79% of customers trust online reviews as much as personal reviews. And, one, and a one-star rating boost on Yelp correlates to about a 5 to 9% increase in revenue. We also have 40% of frequent visitors prefer online order and spend more on those orders than they do in store. We have seen this in our own off-premise journey. For the millennial generation who values experiences over things, dining serves as a daily experience they want to share. In fact, restaurants are the top location sharing category on social media. And customers are no, they, they don't see restaurant apps as a payment method anymore, but they also expect loyalty programs and they expect to be delivered a personalized experience. In order to fulfill the digital cravings of customers and to compete with this competitive landscape, uh, we require high quality and complete data. Um, prior to the digital age, the only channel you had to worry about was print. Now you have automated POS, you have e-commerce, you have web, we also have the app, and it is critical that all these channels stay synced to ensure customer satisfaction as well as profitability. Trends in what customers are looking for from a menu offering change rapidly, and we need the ability to quickly capture those changes and pivot. We also need to be able to quickly react to unforeseen forces which can impact menu items and customer satisfaction, uh, such as weather events. Local preferences is also an important trend. In the U.S., the expectations of consumers on the West Coast are very different from those on the East Coast. They tend to want lighter options with a greater Asian influence. We need to be able to capture all of this data and react accordingly. Consumer expectations vary even greater when you look in international markets. For example, in China, Outback does not have the blooming onion on the menu. Of course, we have supply chain tra uh, traceability. We need to be able to tell our suppliers how to procure and distribute our product and how much inventory to keep. We need to know where we are getting our food and set expectations around quality and food safety. We need to be able to quickly identify where food is and pull it back in case of a recall. With regards to customer engagement, we have reward programs. In our case, we have dine rewards. Uh, we also are targeting personalization. We can learn about our customers and are able to interact with them. Uh, it's amazing what people are willing to let you know about themselves. And of course, there's social media, Yelp, Foursquare, Facebook. And finally, the digital experience is, is another business objective. Our e-commerce platform is super critical especially if delivery is becoming so much more important, uh, whether it's direct or through a third party, consumers are demanding delivery. As you can see, it is fundamental that Blooming Brand's supply chain transform into a demand-driven supply chain in order to compete in this new digital age. To do this, we must bring visibility to a highly complex and decentralized supply chain. 
a supply chain that includes over 270 suppliers, over 70 distributors, and 1,500 restaurants. This is just in food, packaging, and smallwares alone. The process we build must be reliable in order to maintain the confidence of our restaurant operators. And our supply chain response to demand must be profitable in order to meet Blooming Brand's financial goal. We went through a very comprehensive process to select the One Network solution. But by far, some of the key reasons we chose One Network were, number one, the ease of deployment and adoption. Uh, number two, affordability due to the cloud recurring fee model. Number three, minimal development work needed. We really use the vanilla method here. And finally, ease of integration with the various ERP systems that we have. The, the one network solution deployed at BBI includes a whole slew of modules. Demand forecasting, demand translation, demand sensing, inventory management, replenishment planning, order forecasting, order creation, back propagation of order forecasts and orders, and supply chain visibility. All of these solutions were deployed on top of one network's multi-tiered cloud network platform called Real-Time Value Network. One network is providing a global planning, optimization, and execution backbone that our entire distributor and supplier community can leverage to be highly responsive to consumer dining habits. This cloud network has allowed us to realize rapid results and to leapfrog the results achieved by traditional ERP implementations. The One Network solution captures POS data at the store level on an hourly basis, aggregates all POS to the DC level, and computes a statistical weekly forecast. It then disaggregates the DC forecast down to the restaurant level by using machine learning agent that continuously optimizes the allocation of sales from the DC week level to the restaurant day level. Constantly fine tunes the demand forecast at the restaurant day level by using machine learning agents that monitor the forecast demand against the actual demand. This delivers a level of forecast accuracy never seen before in the industry. It also translates the menu item forecast into ingredient forecast by leveraging uh, Blooming Brands recipes and maintains a perpetual inventory level for all ingredients at the restaurant and DC level. It then calculates the order forecast in replenishment planning based on the demand forecast, inventory levels, and inventory policies. It then backpropagates the order forecast across all tiers in the network so that all participants have much better visibility of demand across the planning horizon. It then generates automated orders at the store level based on the daily order forecast, and it communicates these orders for fulfillment. Um, obviously, it can maintain visibility of orders and shipments across the whole network uh, for exception-based alerting and monitoring. So it's a very, very comprehensive system. Now, talking about results, um, you know, this solution has allowed us to achieve best-in-class forecast accuracy levels from the low 60s to the high 80s. We've essentially eliminated the bullwhip effect, and we have improved the efficiency of our inbound supply chain, reducing many, many of our suppliers' costs. We've also virtually eliminated inventory transfers between restaurants. Uh, we've eliminated expediting from our core suppliers, and we're delivering the freshest product to restaurants ever before. Um, along with this fresh product, we've been able to reduce inventory by nearly 50%, and certainly we have been optimizing costs all along the way. Um, the last part of the module, which is the blockchain, uh, we have just started our pilot. Now, for the business case, the number one thing we're looking for is transparency. We want to gain visibility of items between all nodes in the network, enabling all parties to make better decisions and work more collaboratively. 
We also want to improve chain of custody. We want to know exactly who has what, where, and when, and minimize the possibility of mishandling and contamination. And finally, we are, we are targeting to have a better food recall process. Uh, we want to handle all our recalls with confidence, minimize risk and the high cost of re recalls by pinpointing the problem and executing precision recalls of only the affected items. And speed is king when it comes to recalls. We are in the early stages of our blockchain pilot and will be able to speak about our experience with this aspect of the One Network platform at a future date. So I'll now hand it over to Bernard to talk about the One Network tool. Many, many thanks for your compelling remarks. Uh, Juan talked about the tough competitive landscape the restaurant operators find themselves in as they face more pressure from traditional competitors as well as new disruptive food options such as home deliveries and meal kits. More than ever before, restaurants need to deliver on consumer expectations 100% of the time at the lowest landed cost in order to gain consumer advocacy and preserve and increase their margins at the same time. In order to achieve that objective, restaurant companies have to address multiple priorities. At the restaurant level, they need to increase forecast accuracy, improve freshness, reduce waste, lower landed costs, and improve the execution of limited time offers and new product introductions. They also need to simplify the ordering process in order to help the restaurant managers spend more time in the front of the house. Across their entire supply chain, restaurant operators need to work with their partners to optimize inventories, service levels, and logistics costs at the same time. They need to help their suppliers synchronize their production and inventory management operations with the demand signal and they need to achieve a higher degree of visibility and transparency of demand and supply across their entire supply network. None of these priorities is a nice to have. They are all critical to the success of restaurant companies. The key question is, is there a single solution that enables these companies to address all priorities at the same time? The answer is simple. Restaurant companies can address all these priorities by joining a consumer-driven supply network. Only a true multi-party, multi-tier network platform that connects all parties to a single version of the truth will enable restaurant companies to increase sales and consumer satisfaction, reduce the variability of demand and variability of supply, reduce landed costs slash inventories and increase service levels at the same time, improve the supply performance of distributors, carriers, and suppliers alike, improve their supply chain agility, velocity, and transparency, and last but not least, improve their product safety and chain of custody. How can restaurant companies deploy a consumer-driven network? Well, again, the answer is simple. Think of a consumer-driven supply network as a system of engagement deployed as a B2B platform across your entire supply network. All parties on the network, the restaurant company itself, its franchisees, distributors, carriers, logistics providers, and suppliers can all join the network with one single connection, replacing or enhancing the expensive and complex system of point-to-point -point integrations across the entire network. The multi-party, multi-tier processes are defined within the network platform, and at each step of the process, the decision is made to either run the process on the network or integrate it to the systems of records used by each enterprise on the network. The integrity of the entire process is made possible by a number of key capabilities, such as a multi-party common master data model that maps master data across all partners on the network, a deep multi-party permission model to determine who can see and do what at each step of the process, 
a modular and adaptable framework to assemble and configure solutions required by customers, and a scalable platform as a service that can be extended to meet the process requirements of all customers. Think about deploying such a digital supply network platform to enable a dual platform strategy. Use enterprise systems to manage enterprise workloads and use the network platform to manage multi-party workloads. One Network's Platform as a Service, or PaaS, is designed from the ground up to manage multi-party networks, which is by far superior to connecting your supply chain point to point across all tiers multiple times over. This simple principle will deliver much better and faster results at a much lower cost of deployment. Successful real-time consumer-driven supply networks rely on key, uh, four key pillars. Number one, a real-time single version of the truth shared by all parties on the network based on their permissions. Number two, intelligent autonomous agents that are executed against the real-time single version of the truth with the ability to sense and respond as well as make intelligent decisions and execute those decisions autonomously. In the case of the restaurant industry, as mentioned by Juan, intelligent agents are used, for example, to sense demand as often as POS data is made available and automatically fine-tune the demand forecast across all stores in the system, resulting in best-in-class forecast accuracy. Intelligent autonomous agents running in real time on your execution data deliver vastly superior business results than batch, batch planning and optimization engines disconnected from your execution systems. Number three, leveraging a modular and adaptable multi-party network platform to allow companies to build flexible solutions and keep configuring and extending these solutions as their needs evolved. It is critical to be able to build flexible solutions that can be deployed modularly and adapted over time as need be. The One Network Platform as a Service allows companies to extend the One Network modules or build new ones as required by their multi-party processes. And One Network has a never legacy policy, which means that all new capabilities built using our flexible and extensible platform are integrated into the product and supported at time of go live. You never have to worry about solution extensions becoming legacy applications. Number four, it is also important to take an agile, self-funding, and low-risk approach when deploying solutions. One network uses an agile implementation methodology that leverages a sprint approach and ensures quick time to value and low risk. Now let's leave the cover and see what a multi-party process looks like in the context of the restaurant industry. Here is a simple representation of a multi-tier network, including the store tier, distribution tier, supply tier, as well as the logistics providers, all running on the consumer-driven multi-party network with a single version of the truth. As mentioned earlier, one of the keys to success is to share that single version of the truth across the network and to leverage intelligent autonomous agents to generate recommendations and make decisions at each tier of the network in real time. On this diagram, you can see the benefits of the one network solution in action, including how to generate highly accurate forecasts at the store tier using intelligent autonomous agents to sense and fine tune the demand forecast in near real time. How to create order forecasts and orders at the store tier based on these highly accurate forecasts. How to back propagate the order forecasts across the all parties and tiers in the network in real time, which could never be accomplished with, with uh, traditional point to point supply chain implementations how to synchronize demand and supply at each tier of the network, and finally, how to respond to demand by optimizing orders, inventory levels, logistics operations, and production operations across the network, culminating in timelier deliveries, higher service levels, and lower landed costs all at the same time. 
This multi-tier, multi-party process can be implemented on top of and integrated with the existing enterprise systems used by all parties on the network. It can also be deployed on the network platform end-to-end -end and replace these enterprise systems in a modular and flexible way based on your roadmap and timeline. As you can see by now, One Network allows companies to manage their entire network with a high degree of flexibility and reliability, fueled by the concept of a single version of the truth shared by all parties. It was therefore a natural evolution for One Network to leverage everything we have learned about networks over the last 15 years and apply these learnings to the world of blockchain. Blockchain will specifically be used for applications such as chain of custody from field to fork, transparency across the entire supply network, and recall management. One Network has recently released its first blockchain chain of custody applications under the branding of One Blockchain. We call One Blockchain a network orchestrated blockchain because it allows you to take advantage of what we call no compromise blockchain applications, which combine the advantages of blockchain, such as tamper-proof audit trails and decentralized ledgers, with the advantages of networks, such as confidentiality, scalability, and real-time planning and optimization. In summary, Joining the consumer-driven supply network powered by one network will enable you to increase your forecast accuracy by 20 to 30%, increase your retail sell-through by 1 to 2%, deliver 1 to 2% higher service levels, lower your, the inventory levels at each tier of the network by 20 to 30%, reduce, transfer, reduce transportation costs by 15 to 25%, reduce landed costs by 1% to 3%, lower your headcount allocated to transportation scheduling by as much as 60% to 80%, increase your supply chain agility, velocity, and transparency, simplify and automate your multi-party processes, reduce your operational and IT complexity, and accelerate the ROI and time to value of your supply chain projects. With this, I would like to thank you for your attention, and I would like to specifically thank Juan Guerrero for participating in this web webcast and for sharing his very valuable supply chain experience with our audience. Great job, Bernard. Great job, Bernard. Great job, Juan. This is just a terrific, terrific session, guys. We're, we're uh, getting a number of questions coming in uh, from the field, and we're, as I mentioned uh, at the outset, we're going to get to as many of the questions as we can in the time we have allotted today. If we don't get to your question, it's going to be packaged up and be moved over to Juan Bernard, and the gentleman can get back to you via email with your answers. So guys, we have a number of questions here. We've got some time for some good Q&A. So let's take a look here, Juan. Looks like the first question is for you. Now, uh, really, Juan, when you roll everything up that you just shared with us, what we're talking about here is really, you know, supply chain optimization and this digitization transformation that you guys made. Now, how critical has this been for your business, this whole transformation you just went through? It's, it's foundational. We believe that mm -hmm. uh, along with the organizational changes that we've made and many, many of the process improvements that we've deployed, that by having the One Network solution uh, supporting all this, we are seeing a truly winning formula. Uh, and it, mm -hmm. it, like you mentioned, it is fundamental to the overall BBI transformation. Right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. I love that piece of this, this entire story, and I think it's going to resonate with a lot of folks out there today in our attendance. Uh, you know, be it if they're in the restaurant business, if they're in the manufacturing business, regardless, you've made a transformation here. You, you stepped up and, and went through it with a partner, and that's pretty impressive. Uh, I, another question here just rolled in, um, maybe for uh, both of you guys. Uh, guys, the, the food service uh, supply chain is very traditional. It, it certainly is. Now, how, how does a solution like One Network, you know, help to transform that? I'll take the, the first part. Um, You know, I think uh, two two dimensions that are really important, um, the flexibility of one network and the adaptability 
I think makes the, the platform ideal for the food service industry. The food service industry has a wide, wide variety of players, anywhere you know, mm-hmm. very advanced ERPs to, to people that are still working on spreadsheets. Sure. Yes, and, and, and this is Bernard. I, I would add that a, a key part of digitizing the supply chain in the food service industry is to enable the transparency and visibility of information across all the tiers and all the parties across the entire network. And I think this is, this is core to the transformation of, uh, of the supply chain in the food service industry. Uh, taking advantage of a consumer-driven network platform that can sit on top of the enterprise systems of all the parties on the network to bring that visibility and transparency of information uh, backwards and and forwards on on the platform, Mm -hmm. thereby enabling all parties on the network to optimize inventory service levels and landed costs at the same time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and, and Juan really shared how uh, BBI is putting that to work, and, and, and just a terrific case study. Uh, Bernard, this, I think this is more for you. Uh, this question is coming from the floor. This is a question for Bernard. What would you say, you know, you know, there's a lot of folks out there looking at different solutions, but what would you say are the three differentiators of the one network solution at this stage? Yeah, so, so thanks for the question. I appreciate that. Um, certainly the, the, the first differentiator in my mind would be the fact that we have a uh, platform that has been built from the ground up to enable multi-party, multi-tier processes uh, with a deep permission model and a multi-party common master data model that allows all the parties on the network to share a single version of the truth, which is critical, again, to the digitization of information across the entire network. The second key differentiator is what I mentioned earlier, the utilization of intelligent autonomous agents that can be plugged in directly into the execution layer to be able to replan and optimize incrementally and continuously at all times to make sure that you can optimize your operations in real time directly within the execution layer. This is fundamentally Mm -hmm. a a big difference compared to the traditional um, uh, engines that run disconnected from uh, uh, from the execution layer. And the third is the agility and flexibility of the platform Uh, This is really key because we have to get past the point where companies buy off-the-shelf software or build custom. Mm -hmm. Neither one of those work going forward. So you need to have the ability to have an agile and flexible platform that leverages um, off-the-shelf modules but allows you to continue to augment them and configure them to meet the needs of your business as those needs evolve. So I would say those three are the three major differentiators. Yeah, yeah, makes it makes a lot of sense, Bernard. That's that's, that's terrific. And guys, we had another question rolling in. I'll, I'll throw this uh, over to either one of you guys. Uh, you know, we, we talked about it, Juan, you talked about, you know, consumers are more demanding than ever, right, in, in the restaurant business and just about every area right now on the consumer side. Now, in the restaurant business, how, how can you convert them to brand advocates by delivering the freshest meals at the highest quality and most affordable price? How, how do you do that? So on, from, from our per perspective, you know, it's really got to be the ecosystem. Um, all participants mm-hmm. have to be, have to be uh, on board whether it's our fresh fish suppliers, our, you know, our steak suppliers, our produce suppliers, our distributors, um, and the operators themselves. So uh, it really is an ecosystem. Uh, obviously, the One Network Solution, an ideal platform for bringing that ecosystem together and creating the brand mm-hmm. experience. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. 
And guys, we, we've got a couple questions that are rolled in about the blockchain, and it's it's one of those areas that a lot of our readers right now are kind of still kind of scratching their heads. They're, they're they're trying to get their arms around it. What does it mean to me? What does it mean to my particular business? How can I apply it? And uh, I, I love the fact, Juan, that you had mentioned uh, that in your case study presentation today. In terms of blockchain, you know, uh, overall, you know, how how much of an impact do you think blockchain is going to make in the food industry going forward? Well, you know, for for the longest time, uh, having a secure food supply chain has been the goal of the food industry, uh, and mm-hmm. we have not achieved that in the past, as as demonstrated by you know some pretty big high level recalls that that were you know not only highly visible, but had right. you know detrimental impact to companies. Uh, you know, it, it, I think we believe that blockchain is finally the technology that can make that ultimate goal uh, come true. So we're very mm-hmm. hopeful. Yep, yep, absolutely. Impressive to see that, that a BBI, an organization as broad and complex as BBI is, is going forward with it. And we, you know, again, love to follow up with you down the road, Juan, uh, as a terrific story across our publications to see how you guys are, are doing that. And, and Bernard, it, it, the, the final question is going to be coming to you. Um, you know, you're going to be have a lot of competitors coming up uh, over over the next you know six months to a year in terms of blockchain. You know, what what makes the one network blockchain solution uh, different? What makes it stand out in the market right now? Yes, that, that's a great question. You are very correct. Blockchain has become very fashionable, so we see the emergence of mm-hmm. brand new competitors, brand new uh, heavily funded companies we had never heard of before. Most of them, you know, very right. very new. The, 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 obviously the, the differentiator for one network is we have been doing network operations for 15 years. We understand the notion of sharing information across an entire network, across multiple parties, multiple tiers. So we fully embrace blockchain as a new technology. At the same time, we also understand the aspects of blockchain that have to be configured for the world of supply chain. This is why we be, we came up with our one blockchain solution as a network orchestrated blockchain, leveraging 15 years of experience of network operations to balance the advantages of blockchain, obviously the single version of the truth, the auditability of, of, of the chain, the decentralized ledger, but also making sure that together with that, we delivered the right uh, level of co- confidentiality, permission-based access to information, the right scalability, and the ability to leverage real-time planning and optimization within the blockchain, which, again, is not offered by the blockchain standards natively. So we need to augment right. the blockchain standards to meet the needs of the, of, of, uh, of the supply chain domain, which is what we have done. So we feel very strongly that our 15-year experience combined with the blockchain mm-hmm. standards will deliver very differentiated blockchain applications. Absolutely, Bernard. Well, we're going to be, from an editorial perspective, we're going to be watching how One Network uh, evolves in that space. And, and Juan, again, like I said, we'd love to follow up with you as uh, things roll out. Well, well, gentlemen, we're up against uh, uh, time. I want to let all of our attendees know we've captured all of your questions, uh, and we're going to move those over to uh, Juan and Bernard. And again, on your screen right now, you also see a direct email address. If you guys can you know, uh, have any questions, you can fire it off to that email address as well. Well, Juan Guerrero, terrific job today. We want to thank you so much, sir, for, for uh, opening your doors and, and showing us this great transformational story. I think it's, it's resonating with you know, the restaurant business and, and our folks in that business as well as folks in other vertical businesses as well. Uh, and you should be uh, commended for that terrific transformational story. It's something we're trying to you know, really push out there in our pages of our magazines as well. Thank you so much. Well done. Thank you, and Michael. Bernard, thank you, sir. Great job, great job today, guys. Really wonderful job. And we want to thank everybody for attending. And, of course, we want to thank uh, One Network uh, Enterprises for uh, you know, making this all possible today. Well, gentlemen, thanks again. Great.